One of the most common things I get asked is, what do I need to get started in a precision rifle style event? Um, so today I'm going to break that down into two categories, a need to have and a nice to have category. So stick around till after the intro, we'll jump into that and uh, this should give you a better idea of what you need to get started in a precision rifle style event. So let's roll the intro. Boof. Right, arguably the most important kit in the need to have category is a rifle, okay, with an optic on. This is how a 1500 chambered in 6.5 cruise mode this rifle is clear. Um, so uh, I've topped it off with a PST Gen 2. This is a first focal plane optic. It's in the 3 to 15 configuration. Now, shooting precision rifle matches, it is really important that you have a first focal plane optic. This will just allow you the ability to hold wind on different magnification levels. Um, and your reticle subtensions uh, and the hash marks won't be changing. So keep that in mind. Ideally, you want a first focal plane optic. It can be done with the second focal plane optic, but then you have to have a really good understanding of your reticle uh, at different magnification levels, which is extremely difficult to do under time pressure. Even under normal circumstances, it's difficult to do. So keep that in mind. Uh, the PST Gen 2 and 3 to 15, I think, is plenty for shooting precision rifle style matches. You don't need a massive high magnification range. Um, that is uh, nice to have, it's certainly not a need to have. So uh, the other thing you want to be doing with a rifle like this, you potentially want to be having something on the front end of your muzzle. So this rifle's obviously got the muzzle as it comes from the factory. So in terms of muzzle devices, you've got two options. You can either go for a silencer, okay, if you're going to go this route. Uh, this is a DPT silencer, these come from New Zealand. If you go the silencer route, you want to be putting a suppressor cover on that. And the big reason for that is, as you're shooting your stage and your suppressor heats up, Mirage is going to rise from that suppressor. Your scope's behind it, you're going to be looking through that first of all. It's going to cause a point of impact shift for you. And it's going to be really difficult to see your targets, um, because it'll look a little bit soupy. So, suppressor is one option. My personal favorite is a muzzle brake. I prefer shooting muzzle brakes, because it gives me nicer uh, recoil reduction uh, because it soaks up that recoil much better than a suppressor whereas a suppressor feels to me like it's more of a push you know the recoil after the shot lasts a little bit longer whereas with the muzzle brake it's more of like a snap for myself this is an MDT Elite muzzle brake they're available in SA from Wolftech Ohm so I'll tag them down below for that um, you can see on, on this rifle I'm running one of those too so I prefer a muzzle brake uh, the next thing you're going to need obviously when you're doing a shooting match is some way to protect your ears. So this is a Peltor digital ear protection unit. You're going to need ear pro regardless. So normal ear pro is here in the need to have category. Digital hearing protection is in the nice to have category. The reason I've gone for digital, uh, you'll see sometimes I even run the internal one, depends what rifle I'm shooting. The reason I've gone for digital is if the range officer is giving me a command while I'm on stage, I can still hear him talking to me with this. Whereas with normal ear protection, it could be difficult. So if he's saying, Bit, there's 15 seconds left on the stage, I can hear him, but as soon as the shot breaks, this reduces that sound and my ears are protected. The next thing you're going to need, that's definitely in the need to have category, excuse me, is first of all, it's a nice hat to get out the sun, okay, um, and eye protection. Eye protection is vital when you're shooting. Most places do allow you to shoot without eye protection, but even um, just standing around and stuff like that, your eyes are going to take a beating out in the sun the whole day. So get a good set of eye protection. I'm using uh, Smith's eye protection at the moment. And um, these are really nice. First of all, comes in a super nice case. Different lens options for different weather conditions. And um, these lenses do have a ballistic rating on them. And because they're red, they look super cool. Okay? Um, so I quite like those. So that pretty much takes care of the need to have category. The rest of the stuff you can kind of borrow at matches. One thing I do recommend you also bring is a nice rear bag or some kind of stand bag. So this is a solo sack from a company called Short Action Precision. They're available in South Africa from Kurt from the Shooting Guys. I'll also tag Kurt down below. What I like about this bag, it's quite versatile. You can put it over a barricade and lay your rifle on top. Um, and it's quite moldable and it's small enough to also act as a rear bag. So a shooting bag. So really, rifle, optic, Shooting bag, eye protection, hearing protection. The rest of the stuff you can sort of get at the matches. So at the National Rifle League, we're not gonna limit you guys in terms of borrowing kit from any competitors. So really the main thing is you need is ear protection, 
eye protection. A rifle with an optic that can dial, you need to be able, have the ability to dial because holding over would be really difficult. It can be done, I've seen people do it, it can be done. Um, some sort of muzzle device if you wish, but it's not, it's uh, nice to have actually, it should be in the nice to have category. But we've really created also the hunter category for you guys with a setup exactly like this, where we're going to give you more time on a stage um, to get through most of the stage with your internal magazine and still give you enough time to top load um, to get through the additional rounds um, if need be. So you can come with a rifle like this, don't feel intimidated if you have a rifle like this. We've created a category just for you to come and experience the sport, so we're super excited about that. So let me pop this guy down, let's get over to the big rifle behind me and uh, see what is in the nice to have category. Right, so in our nice to have category we have also a Hauer. Um, this is a 223, but the caliber is kind of irrelevant for the goal of the discussion. This rifle is kitted out worth basically everything. We start at the front with an MDT Elite muzzle brake. That's going to be out of focus because the camera wants to focus on me. We've got the Atlas PRS bipod on uh, Arcup rail adapter. We've got the MDT ESS chassis which houses this platform. It's got a detachable magazine to allow for mag changes. Uh, we won't be limiting how much you can put in the mag at all. Um, it's got the nice little two round holder which allows you to, if you run out of ammo in your mag, you can pull around out of there, drop it in the top. This just attaches to your rifle with a piece of velcro. It's a super nice to have and a really inexpensive upgrade. We have a little bolt handle, um, tactical bolt handle on this just to get a better grasp on that. That's made from GNG vomiting. Screws up, no gunsmithing required, very nice. MDT vertical grip, carbon fiber bits and pieces, also a 3 to 15 PSC Gen 2. Got a nice little bubble level on there. I've got a throw lever on the back here. I've got defender flip caps. This rifle is basically kitted out with everything you want on a precision rifle. Now, this is a, a high-end system, obviously. Half of the stuff you could do without. You really do need a bipod also. Um, I skipped over that in the um, need to have category. I really think you need a bipod for, for the sport. A Harris is nice, but I do prefer the Atlas because it provides a more stable platform. Let me pop this down and get into the other stuff also. Because she does get a little bit heavy. Right, so the next thing that's a nice to have but not need to have is a good range finder. I use the Swarovski EL range at the moment. They're nice for me uh, for when we do some hunting. I've got a range finder in a pair of binos for rifle shooting. They're cool because I can spot nicely for my competitors this top glass. Um, again, nice to have, not need to have for a rifle match. You don't need a range finder, you don't need binos um, because most people will give you, hey, here, look at, through my binos just, just so you can see where the targets are and all the ranges will be given to you. The next item we get to is a Kestrel. Uh, this is a Kestrel 5700 with link and applied ballistics. It's basically a ballistic app. Um, you can have this on your phone. So this is nice to have, need to have as a ballistic app on your phone. And I use something like Strelok Pro. Shot plenty of matches with that. Most people are going to give you the wind reading and say it's a 12 mile an hour or 10 kilometers per hour from 9 o'clock or whatever. You can put that into your ballistic app on your phone and you should be good to go. Um, what else have we got? Uh, tripod. You see that people use these at Precision Rifle Matches all the time. This is a Swarovski CT101 if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that's it. This tripod is very expensive but really nice. Again, not a need to have, it's nice to have. Uh, this year I'm going to try and not use a tripod at all. Well, I'm just going to use a tripod to get that camera on this so you guys can see me shoot and that we can learn from that with the guys in, in the Patreon group. Really not a need to have. If there's a tripod stage, more than likely you'll be provided with the tripod that will be on the stage. Everybody uses the same one. So it is a bit of an ass burner when you've spent 15,000 Rand on a tripod. You show up at the one tripod stage and you're not allowed to use your own tripod. So for that reason, I don't think it's necessary to buy a tripod and you certainly don't have to go full um, crazy with your tripod purchase. But that's about it. Uh, obviously, ammo, you need ammo, that's a need to have. Um, but yeah, you don't need a lot. So bring your rifle, bring a scope that can dial it, rear bag, some ear protection and eye protection and rock up at your next NRL match and see what it's all about. It's a fun sport. After you've shot a bit, you can decide, listen, I want to buy that, I want to buy this. And it'll give you a better, you'll have more information to make an informed decision. Whereas initially I started out 
I saw some clips on YouTube, I had no idea what to do, went out, bought a second focal plane optic and ended up having to rebuy quite a bit of kit. So uh, make informed choices if you guys have any questions, if I haven't covered anything, there's a chance I've forgotten something really silly and uh, I'll add that in the description. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope to meet you guys soon at an NRL match or a precision rifle match and uh, I look forward to growing the sport. Hit me up if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. Take your rifle, go shoot. It's the only way to learn. It's the best way to learn. Um, even if you don't do well, we'll be there to help you. I won't be shooting my own matches because in the rules it says it's illegal, so we're not about that. Um, I might shoot them for fun afterwards or the day before, but I will be there at a match to help you guys and to make sure that the match runs super smoothly and that we're very safe. So keep that in mind. I look forward to meeting you and uh, have a good one. Bye.